Greetings, High Crest Hawks. This is Dr. Palzet, your principal, coming to you with a student accountability system video. The purpose of this video is help you to help you understand our student accountability and school system and school rules, um, and make sure you understand exactly what's expected of you and the consequences attached. So the purpose of our video is to help you understand the student accountability system and make sure you're familiar with it. We want to clarify our expectations for student behavior and also clarify any consequences that you may, may, may receive for inappropriate behavior. Why do we have a student accountability system at HMS? The goal of the student accountability system is to help students make good choices. Every school has school rules and we are no different. We want to make sure that, that Highcrest Middle School is a safe place for kids to learn and for teachers to teach. So we have rules to help us to accomplish that. What are the expectations for my conduct at HMS? We want you to be respectful to your peers. We want you to be respectful of yourself and your teachers. If you follow that as your general rule, you should be okay. We're going to get a little bit further into uh, expectations for behavior as we go through the presentation. Our code of conduct. HMS students need to show respect at all times. HMS students need to show tolerance for others and their differences. You need to behave appropriately, and I think you know what that means. By the time we're in fifth and sixth grade, I don't think I need to go into a long speech about what appropriate school behavior looks like. Finally, we want you to be responsible learners. Ask lots of questions and help your peers. That's being a responsible learner. Students who have a hard time following our rules may earn a demerit. Demerits uh, are accrued on a tiered basis, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the tiers in a second, but you can earn a demerit for things like running in the hallway, for dress code, for being tardy to class, for disrespect, or as I like to call sass mouth. Now it does say iPhone, iPod, electronics on there, and we know you are using those items here at school, and unless you're using them for a school purpose, you may get a demerit if you're not using them appropriately. So that means no texting in class, no texting in school, unless it has a school purpose and your teacher is giving you the direction to do so. As far as dress code, we get lots of questions about dress code. And the rule about dress code is to keep it tasteful. You want to be completely covered and covered appropriately, and the messages on your clothes need to have appropriate school-appropriate messages. What are the consequences if I choose to break a rule? We want to make sure that you clearly understand all of the consequences. And we're going to go through the tiers in just a second, the tiers, demerit tiers in just a second. But one of the consequences you may receive is a silent lunch. I want to talk a little bit about what that means. A silent lunch happens during your lunch period and it gives you time to reflect on your behavior away from your peers. We have a silent lunch room for each lunch period. So fourth period is in room 156 fifth period in room 211, and sixth period in room 216. What happens in that silent lunchroom? We need to report directly to the silent lunchroom. Don't go to the cafeteria first. You're going to fill out a, a reflection form accepting responsibility and then also possibly coming up with a plan so it doesn't happen again. You will go get your lunch after all, other, all the other students have been dismissed to recess. You'll eat silently during the recess time and clean up after yourself. No homework, no talking, and you need to be quiet in the silent lunch room. What if you forget to come to silent lunch? Oh, that is a problem. Unfortunately, if you forget to come to silent, it is your responsibility to attend your silent lunch if you're assigned one. And if you don't show up, you're going to have to serve two silent lunches and you'll move up one tier on the discipline chart. How do teachers keep track of who's supposed to be in silent lunch? Well, that demerit slip has three copies. One copy goes to you, one copy goes to the front office, and another copy goes to your homeroom teacher so they can have a conversation with you about your behavior. In the front office, we enter that demerit slip information into our database every single day. An email is automatically sent home to parents that says why you received the demerit, what were the consequences around it, and all kinds of information about it. And the goal of that is for your parents to have a conversation with you at home so they can help support good behavior. Each day, a list is generated with all the students who uh, are supposed to report to the silent lunchroom, and that is given to the silent lunchroom supervisor. Your student discipline record is also automatically updated once that information is put into our database. So here they are, the tiers. The first two demerits you receive are simple warnings. Please don't do it again. Please don't chew gum. Please don't run in the halls. Please dress appropriately, whatever it may be. 
every time you get a demerit, an email is sent home to your parents because we want them to know what's happening at school. Your third, fourth, and fifth demerits will result in one, two, and then three uh, silent lunches. So one for each, the for third, one for the fourth, and one for the fifth. The sixth and seventh demerit result in after school Friday after school detentions. Uh, the the sixth is a one hour Friday school with a parent meeting, and the seventh is a one and a half hour Friday school, and that's where we'll come up with a discipline plan to help you make better decisions. If you're issued a seventh demerit, we're going to come up with a plan to help support you, and we're going to involve your parents in that plan as well. They do not. Demerits do not start over each quarter. They do not start over each semester. It's one full year. The demerit system will start, or the student accountability system will start over for you at the beginning of the following year. So we do not start over each quarter. You do not get a warning in each category. You get two warnings total. So that means you cannot chew gum once and then run in the hallway once and then be late once. You, each one of those is a separate demerit and moves you up on the tiered system. Now, the merits. We want to encourage good choices and we want to highlight those that are going above and beyond every day so we have something called a merit. If a staff member sees you doing something good that goes above and beyond expectations, helping a student pick up their books in the hall, being kind to one another, they will give you a merit and there are a whole host of things that go along with a merit. When a staff member gives you a merit, they're going to put your name on the, the merit form and it's your job to go down and bring it to the office and write your name very clearly and legibly on a clipboard that we have in the office so we can send your parents an email home and let them know what a great job you're doing here at school. The names are listed on the broadcast each week and we'll display them on a bulletin board. Merit slips become raffle tickets and we pull raffles multiple times throughout the year and uh, we raffle off things like iTunes gift cards, Best Buy gift cards, Homer's gift certificates, things like that, which are uh, winners are announced on the PA. The more merits you get, the more times you can enter, the more likely you'll win. So here's our recap. Behave appropriate at all times. That means in the cafeteria, at recess, walk in the halls, keep your hands to yourself. You know what be appropriate behavior looks like. Speak appropriately. Be respectful to your peers and to staff. Dress appropriately. Take respect for yourself by making sure you're completely covered and the messages on your shirts, are, or shirts or clothes are appropriate for school. Be on time to all classes and to lunch. Please don't chew gum. It makes a mess in our building. Be respectful to people's property and to other people. And only use your iPad or other iPod, iPad, or other electronics either after school or with staff permission. During all of your classes today, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions. Your teachers are a wealth of information when it comes to the rules of our school. Likewise, I can answer any questions if you see me in the halls, and so can your GLADs. Highcrest is an awesome school, and we together we are going to make it even better. So thank you, have a great year, and we'll see you soon.